Good people YouTube, I'm the Watch Idiot, and over the past few weeks after Watches and Wonders, there has obviously been a lot of attention put on the releases, but as usual, there's been a little bit extra attention put on the Rolex and Tudor ones. So yeah, some of the reactions were good, some of them bad, you know, as with anything, but the releases this year and of the past few years has, you know, made me think about, you know, why Tudor's releases and especially Rolex's releases, you know, why they felt a little bit lazy. So in this video, I'm gonna go over why, as far as I'm concerned, Rolex has pretty much stopped trying with their designs and why Tudor seems to be edging towards that same path, albeit, you know, it might be a little bit too early to tell. And also I'm gonna go over some simple things that I'd like to see Rolex do in the future to help, you know, spice things up without sacrificing their ethos and why I think actually Patek Philippe is pretty much the perfect example of how an old tiny Swiss powerhouse can innovate and try new things without losing sight of their identity. And big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Much appreciated. So in the case of Tudor, I mean, people are calling it a homage brand, like it's a bad thing, even though its entire existence was to be a sub brand to Rolex. I mean, what I care about more is how Tudor moves forward with that base identity and you know if it, if it creates something that's Tudor and not directly Rolex. And Tudor has been super successful in doing that, but also at the same time, and in many cases, it's not been very successful in doing that. I mean, Tudor in my eyes is still traveling along the right path, even though they seem to be getting close to being lazy. And yes, they have released a bunch of variations of the Black Bay, which could be considered lazy, but what I do like about Tudor is that they still do try out new things. I mean, the P01 was a bold move and it was not a resounding success for sure, especially when compared to their other watches. But, you know, I respect them for putting out a watch that, you know, <laughs> let's be honest, it's, it's a bit crazy. And then last year, they released more Black Bays once again, but the reason why I was okay with them putting out another batch of Black Bays is because Tudor put it out in new materials that Tudor hasn't used very much beforehand, like gold and ceramic. And also the brand new 925, obviously, which is a material that is hardly ever used in watches in general. 925 silver, that is. Oh, and then the fully ceramic version has a new uh, Metis certified movement. So yeah, I mean, no new designs, technically speaking, but they still tried something new. This year, however, definitely was not the strongest in terms of new designs and bulk creations and things like that. But, you know, despite the Black Bay Pro being a explorer to homage, Tudor has at least created something that didn't previously exist in their lineup. I mean, we now have a second GMT choice and I am super excited about it because I love my Explorer 2 uh, when I had it, it just wore too big. So now I can have a smaller version of it, something that Rolex doesn't offer. Of course, there were other GMT designs that us as fans wanted a little bit more like a Black Bay 58 GMT, which as awesome as it would have been, it would have technically been less creative since it just would have been a Black Bay 58 with a different movement in it and the GMT bezel pretty much. Or it would have been absolutely amazing for the Pelagos to finally have its you know uh, time in the spotlight by adding a Pelagos GMT which would have been unbelievably easy so is Tudor becoming lazy I mean at this point I think they are a little bit because a thinner GMT really should have been developed you know especially since it was it's been four years since the Black Bay 41 GMT came out but overall I think it's a little bit too early to say that since you know so far every year they have added something like relatively new and interesting within their design limits. Rolex on the other hand I mean has pretty much stopped trying even within their very constrained design limit but you know within those constraints there still is a lot that can be done and uh, yeah I mean first off I mean credit where credit's due I was not expecting to see the new green GMT Master 2 come as a Destro model. So yeah, I mean, I was pleasantly surprised by it, but you know, in the end, it's just a GMT Master 2 that's been, you know, flipped on its head with a new color bezel. You know, it's not that hard to do for a company like Rolex. The last time that we saw a completely brand new watch from Rolex was the Sky Dweller. 10 years ago in 2012 and yeah whether or not you like the look of it and whatnot 
it was a seriously cool watch because not only what did it have a brand new complication for rolex the annual calendar but it was controlled by a really cool command bezel and yeah i mean just all that put together is is just really cool and is really awesome but since then crickets pretty much they released an all new submariner and all they did was thin down the lugs make it an irritating 21 millimeter lug width and increase the size to 41 millimeters which didn't make that much of a difference but yeah oh and they also put in a new movement that was actually already out for years beforehand and yeah i mean it all did make a visual difference but i mean it's much more of a refresh than it was an all new release like the maxi k sub that it replaced you know back when it was new oh and going back to the sky dweller they released new sky dwellers but they were new in that they now have an oyster flex option you know and then the batman was released new with an oyster bracelet new strap and bracelet options are not new releases to my eyes i mean they they're just new options that really should have been options from the start especially since the oyster bracelet and the oyster flex bracelet existed previously so yeah i mean i've got some thoughts about how Rolex can level up, you know, while still staying true to their roots. And leveling up is something we should all try to do, and video sponsor Skillshare can help with that because it's an online learning community with thousands of eye-opening classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. For me, leveling up means making this channel even better for all of you who are watching my videos. So, you know, I've started watching Marquez Brownlee, AKA MKBHD's class, YouTube success, script, shoot, and edit with MKBHD. And it's been so cool to learn about the crucial aspects of running a YouTube channel directly from someone who has one of the most successful channels out there. And it just so happens that I love his aesthetic and I've been watching his videos for years now, so it's a, yeah, it's a win-win for everyone. But alongside Skillshare has a huge selection of so many other courses on photography, gardening, productivity, entrepreneurship, drawing, you know, all so many things that you can access anytime on your phone or computers. The first 1,000 people who click the link in my description or use my code here, uh, right over here, the watch idiot, one word, will get a free one month trial to experience what Skillshare has to offer. First off, like I said before, their base models, like the Steel Submariners, uh, the GMT Master II, Explorer Daytona, things like that, they shouldn't be completely redesigned. And I mean, they're, they're iconic for a reason and those core models should always be there. They're awesome. So then why not create a brand new sports watch collection? You know, at one point, the Submariner was a brand new, never before seen model. And the same thing goes for the GMT Master when it first came out, and then the Explorer and the Daytona as well. So, you know, saying that they need to stick to their core doesn't really make sense. And maybe they are making something new. I mean, who knows? But it's about time because they are in such a unique position. I mean, they not only have the money, but they almost have like this blind support of the world and the watch world, meaning that pretty much any sports watch that they put out will be bought up instantly and there will be a wait list that will go on for years pretty much guaranteed. And Rolex bothers me the most just because they make incredible watches. I mean, the Oyster bracelet is probably, yeah, it is the best bracelet that I've ever experienced. And the solidity and refinement of the entire package is just so crazy. So it irritates me that I'm irritated by them, especially when they can make a meaningful change with pretty much zero risk. We know that Rolex can be adventurous sometimes because they've done some insane and arguably blasphemous stuff with the pure, a perfect Daytona. I mean, like the Tiger version and then the full on rainbow Daytona. I mean, so clearly Rolex is not above saving the integrity of the original tool watch ethos of their watches, you know, which within reason is totally fine to do. You know, also they introduced the meteorite dial on the white gold GMT Master 2 and then the Hawkeye version right now with the white gold Yacht Master. So, I mean, just spread the creativity, maybe not in those kind of dials, just spread them out a little bit more into, you know, regular watches, maybe in different colors or something like that. Given this precedent, it irritates me that they barely make any changes to the likes of the Explorer 2 and the Submariner. I mean, if they want to keep them as pure tool watches, despite the Submariner having two-tone versions and full gold versions, you know, they could easily introduce a 
titanium version of either one, the Sub Explorer 2 or the Submariner, to keep alongside the standard steel version for those who want it. To me, that would make them even more like the tool watches that they've always been. And on top of that, I mean, titanium is not a crazy material. It's a well-known material that a lot of people use. I mean, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's not too much of a stretch. And it's, I mean, it's not like creating a purple ceramic case of Baron or something like that. So people might say, you know, oh, Rolex can't just change things up because they're a big and serious Swiss watch brand and uh, it wouldn't be proper to do so. But we also have the likes of Patek Philippe, which by all accounts is a very old, very established and very serious Swiss, wa Swiss watch brand like Rolex. And actually like Rolex, it's also privately owned. And on top of that, Patek has their own set of unobtainium hype watches, but they continue to innovate and create watches that don't need to exist, but they do exist just because Patek wanted to do something new. So a few years ago, they released the advanced research version of their Aquanaut, which is a sort of one piece metal pusher system for their GMT function. And they displayed it on the dial as well, which is you know quite a step forward in terms of design. And yeah, it's, it's just really cool new innovation. And that literally did not need to happen to keep the Aquanaut from selling. I mean, it's got years and years of a wait list at this point, but they did it just because they could and they wanted to push horology forward. Pretty much every year they have some sort of new design or a new big update on their complications, which means that Rolex can definitely develop newer, simpler watches, you know, for the, in the same amount of time, especially considering that they're absolutely gigantic. This year, Patek put out some really striking new designs in their college travel line, and then they went on to update the annual calendar GMT movement so that everything can be controlled through the crown with no extra pushers, which is so awesome to think about. And then they also created a brand new 10th of a second mono pusher chronograph just because they could. And this is all from, a big and serious brand that is pretty much untouchable. Obviously, I'm not saying that Rolex could or should make all kinds of new watches every single year, but I really do think that Rolex needs to step up and actually create something that's worth the buzz beyond the the regular buzz that would happen with any Rolex release. And yeah, I want to be excited to see something that's actually interesting, especially since Rolex will be able to make that little interesting thing so well. So it's gonna be an incredible thing if it ever happens. Fingers crossed. So there you have it. Let me know what you guys think about all of this and maybe what kind of watches you'd like to see Rolex create since they will obviously change their ways as soon as they watch my video and see all the comments over here. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit the like button and the subscribe button and all the buttons, all the good buttons that is, uh, because that all really helps the channel grow and uh, spread the word a little bit more uh, within YouTube. So uh, yeah, until the next video, good day.